Good morning and welcome to Western Park Baptist Church uh, this Sunday. Uh, thank you for joining us online uh, for today's worship service. A couple of days ago was uh, a lunar eclipse uh, that happened. Uh, my wife was very excited that uh, that was going to happen. I normally don't care uh, for watching these things, but she woke me up around 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. <laughs> excitedly to to see the progress, to watch the progress of the eclipse out, outside. It was cold, so I, I, I really didn't uh, care for, for stepping outside at that time in the morning. Uh, so grudgingly, I, I, I came out of the house and saw this awesome, awesome display of glory and of power. And uh, very quickly, my eyes popped wide open as I watched uh, the, the immense power of God uh, in the skies, the, the, the earth casting a shadow over the moon. Uh, the, the, the stars were so numerous. It was such a beautiful night, a cloudless uh, night here, so numerous. And uh, I, I, I went away. Uh, thinking of the glory and the awesome power of God. And it's a shame, I don't know, uh, that I don't know how many times you look up into the sky uh, in these days of uh, texting and social media and everybody on our phones. But I think we should do it uh, once in a while to look up into the skies uh, and see the marvelous work of God. So this morning, uh, our call to worship is going to come from Psalm 19, uh, an appropriate psalm that describes uh, the awesome power of God in the heavens. So I'm going to read verses 1 to 6 as I call to worship. And before I read that, I, I, two words pop into my mind. Um, it's the, the, the transcendent God, the God that is over and beyond uh, all power, everything that's happening in the universe, and the God that is imminent. Uh, and I think I learned that from, from Allah. The God who is with us, who is who journeys with us through thick and thin, through joy and sorrow. So as I read that, I want you to put that in our mind uh, for now, even through this service, uh, a God who cares for us, a God who is big and who is also with us. So Psalm 19 verses 1 to 6. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his, of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes it circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The awesome glory and power of God. Let us pray. Father, this morning we give you thanks and praises. We thank you because you are the awesome and the mighty God who rules the heavens and the earth. We give you praise because of your goodness to all mankind and to all animals, to everything in existence, Lord, we see your beauty and your power. So this morning, Lord, we ask that you will be with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for forgiving us all our sins. Thank you for giving us hope in you. Thank you for all the promises that we have in your word. So as we join together today, we ask you, Lord, to come into our hearts, come into our minds, Lord, and help us uh, to see things, to see life, uh, through your eyes in your word this morning bless all those who will participate in this service and bless all your people in christ's name i pray amen
face the mountain peaks You paint the evening skies with wonder The earth, it is your throne From desert to the sea All nature testifies your splendor Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Sing His greatness, all creation Praise the Lord, raise your voice You heights and all you depths From furthest east to west Let everything that has in your very blindness to know your wondrous works to tell your mighty deeds to join the everlasting chorus praise the Lord praise the Lord sing his greatness all creation praise the Lord east to west let everything that has breath praise the Lord let symphonies resound let drums and choirs ring out all heaven hear the sound of one more time all together. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing His greatness all creation. Praise the Lord. Raise your voice, you heights and all you depths. From furthest east to west, let As we go into a time of prayer, I'd like us to use one of David's uh, prayer in Psalm 143. Uh, I think it's an appropriate prayer. Uh, it doesn't say in my Bible here why David prayed this prayer. But I think when I read through it, I, I think many aspects of it work for us. Uh, individually and I think even corporately as we look into uh, the situations in our world and in our in our own lives so I'm going to read it and uh, as we take that moment to think of our own situations and and pray to God so let us pray Lord hear our prayer listen to our cries for mercy in your faithfulness and righteousness come to our relief do not bring us into judgment 
for no one living is righteous before you. The enemy and situations pursue us. We are crushed to the ground. We sometimes dwell in the darkness like those long dead. So our spirit grows faith within us. Our hearts within us are dismayed. We remember the days of long ago. We meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. We spread out our hands to you, God. We thirst for you like a parched land. Answer us quickly, Lord. Our spirit fails. Do not hide your face from us or we will be like those who go down to the pit. Let the morning bring us word of your unfailing love, for we have put our trust in you. Show us the way we should go, for to you we entrust our lives. Rescue us from our enemies, Lord, for we hide ourselves in you. Teach us to do your will, for you are our God. May your spirit good spirit lead us on level ground in jesus name we pray amen scripture reading is taken from psalm 113 psalm 113 if you have your bible you can read along with me verse one praise the lord praise the lord you his servants praise the name of the lord let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust, and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sits them with princes, with the princes of his people. He settles the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. We welcome you today to Western Park Baptist Church on this final Sunday before Advent. Um, just as an aside, this Sunday is the last Sunday of what we call ordinary time. The church uh, liturgical calendar is divided into different seasons, and ordinary time is a big uh, chunk in the middle that follows Easter prior to Advent. And I say that because Sharon has some new art up. You can see it in the background of uh, the shot. And the colors for ordinary time are green. Um, primarily. And so you can see the green hues of Sharon's piece, a little bit of blue as well. And we've done this because we want to highlight the liturgical calendar as a reminder visually, symbolically, of the movement of God in our world and in his people. So ordinary time connected with creation, uh, God's earth, God's world, the green color. So on this final Sunday before Advent, then, we're looking at a couple of psalms. Last week we looked at Psalm 107. Today we look at Psalm 113. And it is a psalm of praise. It's the first of what are known as the Halal Psalms, Psalms 113 through 118. Halal being the Hebrew word for praise, to praise. We get hallelujah from it, to praise the Lord. And... Halal psalms are used in the festival seasons and particularly with Passover. So when Passover was celebrated in a Hebrew home, the Halal psalms were read. And Psalms 113 and 114, including the one we're doing today, were read before the supper. And then the others, um, 15 to 18, were read afterwards. So these psalms were read every year in the Hebrew homes during Passover, and they were a reminder of God's goodness, God's redemptive work on behalf of his people for us today as well. 
And I, it's interesting to note because this psalm then, Psalm 113, would have been one of the last psalms that Jesus read in his earthly life. Because we know from the Upper Room Discourse, John 13 through 17, that story that uh, Jesus and the disciples sing hymns and they sing a hymn just before they leave the Upper Room to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. So these hymns are fresh in Christ's mind. So there's a connection to what we're looking at today to the life of our Lord 2,000 years ago. So this Halal Psalm. So we want to look at that and hear uh, the call that God has for us uh, to give him praise. So it begins with a summons to praise, verses 1 to 3. So it reads, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens, reading verses 1 through 4. So it's a call, a summons to praise. And you, you'll note the repetition that happens three times the word praise. Uh, the name name is used three times. The Lord, y Yahweh, is five times. So there's a lot of repetition and repetition to make points. And so you also note that the focus on God's name. And the name stood for all that is revealed about God, all of his attributes. When they talk about the name of the Lord in the Psalms, it's referring to who God is in his character. So example, Exodus 34, verse 5, we hear some of that. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with them there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. And the Lord passed before him, this is Moses, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Last week we looked at Psalm 107, Focus on Kesed, God's steadfast love. So here, when we hear the psalmist talk about the name and repeats the emphasis on the name, that is meaning we're looking at God in his character. God reveals himself and his name captures some of that in terms of his presentation to his people. So the focus on the name. And then we also notice the focus on time, this time and forevermore. So the time of the Hebrew writer, 3,000 years ago, and now the time here, in, in human time, 3,000 years later, we praise God now and forevermore. God is worthy of our praise in time, in your time, my time, the, day, the days of our lives under the sun, our time. And so the psalmist recognizes that, and not only time, but place from the rising to the setting of the sun, to praise God in all the earth, all around the world, every nation, to give praise to God collectively as God's people, our world. And then finally, there's a focus on God's sovereignty, all nations, verse four. God in relationship with us, notice verse five, Lord, our God, he's our God. He's the God of the people of Israel, and he's our God today. So there's, through the repetition of these various words, name, praise, place, God's focus, God's work, he calls us. And so then we become part of this great collective that is to give praise to God. So we want to praise God here in our church, but this psalm is way bigger than that. It's not just about Weston Park Baptist Church. It's about all the nations. It's God's people all around the planet giving praise to God for who he is and what he's done for us. Declarative praise, descriptive praise. We praise God for who he is and we praise God for what he's done. So I think it's good for us to be reminded that you know, we are part of a great collective of the people of God. Every culture, every nation, right across our, our world. So we think of churches that we have a relationship to. Blythewood Baptist in the center of Toronto. We, we've been 
connected to them for a number of years. We've shared in projects in Bolivia together. They have their congregation, we have ours, but we praise God together, we work together. We think of Ivan Gutierrez's church in Cochabamba, his Baptist church, we've connected with them. We've sent teams down there. We've been, worked with Yvonne. We are part. I'm in communication regularly with Yvonne. He tells me what's going on in his church. I tell him what's going on in ours. His struggles in COVID, our struggles here. Right now in these virtual services, we're using uh, some of the worship from Valerie Ransom. Well, Valerie comes from First Baptist Church in Nanaimo. She's sharing with us her, her, her Praise of God, that congregation and ours. So it's good for us to recognize this. We're not just a little ship ourselves. We are part of God's people. These are just Baptist examples, but all denominations, all peoples who know God, we are part of that great call and summons to give him praise. So when the psalmist begins, praise the Lord, praise, O servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Servants just means worshipers. The, 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 the servants weren't just the Levites. The servants were all of those people who come to the temple to praise. And so the servants of the Lord, that's us. We are called to praise God. It's, it's a duty and it's also a privilege. God desires us to be in relationship with him and part of that is to give him praise. So I do think that's one of the things that's been hard for us during COVID is we've been limited in how we can connect together in our praise. Now we're opening up somewhat and you know it's good to hear the organ and be able to hear the music, see the lyrics, even if we can only hum along. Same with the praise tunes. So it's a call, a summons to praise, and that's a summons to you. If you know the Lord, you are called to give him praise. You are called to be in relationship with him. So in our age of utility, in our age when we only want to do things, we only want to accomplish something, we're reminded here that our relationship with God goes beyond utility and our fundamental calling is to enter into that and give him praise. So if we somehow think praise is secondary, only, we only get to it if it, you know, we can and it doesn't really matter, I'd rather serve some other place, we're missing a core bit of what our relationship with God is like. To enter into that spirit of praise and doxology, that's what doxa, to give him glory. Psalmist obviously thinks it's a big deal because they emphasize it a lot, emphasize it a lot. So to call us into praise. From there in verses five, six, we have a variety of images going on God's transcendence and God's imminence. And the picture is God up high looking down on us. It's, it's a picture of his transcendence. Hear it in verses five and six. Starts with a rhetorical question. Who is like the Lord our God who is seated on high? Who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? The picture is God up high and he's looking down. He's looking down on our universe. He's looking down on the Milky Way and he has to peer hard even to see it. That's the idea. He's big, he's transcendent, and he's peering down on his creation to get a picture of the Milky Way. He's so great high and lifted up, a transcendent God. So that is the picture. But he's not only transcendent, he is also imminent. We've spoken about this. That is, he is with us. And this is one of the great mysteries of the Christian truth, is that God who is transcendent is also God who is imminent. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Note, verse 7, he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heaps. Verse 9, he gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Both of those images are of God's compassionate love, his steadfast love, the fact that he travels with us, he is transcendent, high and lifted up, but he's also imminent. He's with us. He's with you. He's with me. This is the great story of the Advent season that's coming up, starting next week. God breaks into our world in a person, a baby, 
to experience our reality from within, the transcendent God coming down, imminent, journeying with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And so the psalmist is, is, is making those connections. He is both this transcendent God, this universe maker, and also an imminent God who travels with us and knows us, knows your reality, knows mine, knows your needs, knows my needs, knows your health concerns, knows my health concerns. Concerned for you, your ability to pay your rent, to get around the city, to have food to eat. God is a God who is concerned. That is imminent. Imminence, he is with us. So that, that's where the psalmist is going. To lift up the poor and needy, and also note, enlist the needy from the ash heap. That's a picture of the garbage dump outside of town. People who, who can't make a living and are forced to go out into the garbage heap to try to pick up enough so that they can get by, enough food to get by. That, that's the image. And God is with everybody, with us. He travels with us. He journeys with us. So Psalm 113 says, part of the halal psalms. Jesus singing this before he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. So God is a transcendent God. God is an imminent God. He's worthy of our praise, so the psalmist says. So when we hear these things, you know, like, where do we go with that? We've already made a, a connection with Advent. Because in a sense, this piece presages uh, the incarnation of Jesus. Even as God breaks into our world in imminence, he, he, he does this in the most powerful way, finally, with his son. His son leaving the glory of heaven to enter into our world in time. To come as a little baby. A baby who is fragile, who, who needs protection from his parents. This, this is the reality of God. This is the great mystery. God coming in flesh in, in a baby. God, work with us. So Jesus becomes this bridge, a bridge from God to us. That's really the, the reality of the incarnation. The universe maker breaking into our world so we have a bridge. Jesus incarnates the presence of God. And so all these wonderful Advent themes just get a little push forward in, in this psalm and in the psalms that follow. So the psalm presages Advent, we'll pick up on that next week, speaks of the incarnation, looks forward to the incarnation, that we are children of God. Christ is the touchstone that enables us to experience and know God so that we can claim our inheritance as children of God. We've seen this in Ephesians 1. Secondly, I think the psalm, and I, and I encourage you to look at this because it reminds us that we are all together equal as God's children. That we're all, we're all acceptable before God. We, we are his people. We are humanity. Because we tend to start thinking about ourselves in some way as if we are kind of special and that we are above others. We, we here are in the West, we have a lot, we live generally fairly comfortable lives, and we can start thinking we're superior. We're, we're looking down on others. But this psalm reminds us that God lifts up the poor, God lifts up the needy. God takes care of the barren woman. That, the verses there in verse 8 and 9 are taken first from 1 first Samuel. It's Hannah's psalm. And Hannah's psalm looks forward to Mary's song, the Magnificat. God coming down and taking care of the poor, the humble, those who need help. And so God comes to us, but it's a reminder that we're all on the same page. We might have more, we might have less, but God sees us and comes to us in need. His love for us, his love for you. And so this, this season, as we do the food drive here in, in, in the city of Weston, well, that this is a, a way for us to connect with everybody, to help people in need, to re, be reminded that we're all basically on the same path, the same place. 
And we need to encourage and help each other here as much as we can. So to recognize God's perspective of equality, to work for social justice, to free people from oppression as we are able. So this psalm speaks. And I'd also suggest that the psalm reminds us that God works in new and surprising ways and that there, he raises up the idea that there are new possibilities for your life and for my life. I mean, the woman, the barren woman, verse 9, he gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Well, the barren woman ha ha has no idea about this. You remember another barren person was Sarah of old, Genesis. And when she heard the angel saying that they would have a, a son, she and her husband Abram, she laughed. She just thought that was comical. There was no way. How can we as old people have a child? But God is working. There are new possibilities. And Advent is about that. Advent reminds us in the, the work of Christ as he breaks into our world that there are new possibilities there for you and for me. That we're not just stuck in the old place. God is able. All things are possible for him. As we look to him in faith and trust in him, New things can emerge. New possibilities bubble up. And so I pray that in this season that we might be mindful and be looking with open hearts, open minds for the new possibilities that God has for you and for me. So don't believe that you're just stuck. Don't believe that nothing new can happen. Lots can happen because God is the God of the possible, not the God of the impossible. So this psalmist says. And then finally, we're reminded in this psalm, we're calling this psalm a psalm of praise from the bottom up. Because it's a focus on the poor and the needy, the barren, the ones who have very little. But they are called to praise all the way up to the princes. We see that in verse 7, verse 8. And when it, when it says that we have a seat with the princes, what, it, what that means is that we have a place of acceptance, a place of respect that we have a place of identity, that we are important, that we sit at the table. A position of respect. In our world, people want respect. Nations want respect. And here in this psalm, we're called to indeed to give praise to God because he lifts us up. He lifts us up to the table ultimately to the great messianic table where we celebrate the reality that God is with us. We are his people and he is with us. So a call to praise from the bottom up. And I pray and I hope that in our own hearts we, we might wake up to the gift and the privilege it is to walk with God and to praise God. To, to not know him just, you know, in our head, but to know him in our heart, to actually experience what the text is saying. We talked about this last week. To experience him, to experience his goodness, and to give him praise. May we do that together. And I offer these words in Christ's name. Amen. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior, for he has looked with mercy on my loneliness, and my name will be forever exalted. For the mighty God has done great things for me, and his mercy will reach from age to age, and holy, holy, holy is his name. My soul proclaims the greatness
to serve the Lord. And my spirit, exalting God my Savior, for he has looked with mercy on my loneliness. And my name will be forever exalted. God has done great things for me, and His mercy will reach from me. 